Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So we did this uh, yesterday at 6 o'clock Central Time, and it was fun. We had uh, 32, it shows here, joining us for this live drop on Patreon. So this was uh, an exclusive for our Patreon members in which everybody got together and shared their comments, and we answered questions in live time. It was fun. And sort of like a live, but, you know, it only lasted for the length of the, the video there. And uh, it's just a, just a good vibe. Really, really good vibe. Yes, and it, it looks like we're going to try to do more because it was a nice turnout. People were able to connect, which they really, really need right now. Um, a couple people did mention that they got kicked off, and we think it might be because they didn't have the app on their phone. I'm not sure. We haven't totally figured it out yet. But otherwise, uh, besides that, people really seem to enjoy themselves and enjoy being around other people. So we'll see what we can do about maybe doing more. And we want to thank our newest That's patrons right. as well. For I want to thank William Scott, who's been with us for um, a while, for sure, several years, uh, to say the least. And he, he just upgraded his level of Patreon. So thank you, brother. And then we also have Ray and Luann. And so we want to thank you guys again for your support over on the growing Patreon family. And here we see this is a statement. Syed Hassan Nasrallah says the mobile phone in your hand is a killer spy that gives detailed information to the enemy and shows location of our commanders. Most of the things that happen to us, Iran, and our commanders were because of mobile phones. Israel does not need spies. But through the internet and pho phones, it sees all cities, streets, and soldiers. And um, I just wanted to take that statement and expand it to all of us. Because that is a, a reality. And there is always a push. There's a reason why they say, why don't you upgrade? You know, you know, that, uh, you know it's, it's not because you're going to get quicker service. It, and there's multiple reasons. Um, by the way, you know, I had so much arthritis in my hands when I was using uh, an FIVEG phone carefully, carefully, you know, never, ever, ever putting it up to the head. Uh, years ago, when they first came out with these phones, they gave me headaches. And, you know, after having lost my brother to brain tumors, uh, I, I'm very aware of those things. And so I would never put it up to my head. And I'm always, we always use speakerphone. So we use speakerphone. Uh, and in, in a case where, you know, the sound is not even good, we have sound bars. We could even, you know, send, the, send it through a sound bar to hear um, better. So be aware that, yeah, your phone is deadly in more than one way. And that just makes me want to also bring out in the time coming up, the likelihood of us having outages of one sort or another, I think it's going to grow. I don't think they want the technology ever off for too long. But, you know, have a map, an actual map in your in your vehicle. It's not a bad idea. Right. And, you know, these days I, I know how to read maps, but I would definitely have to brush up. <laughs> I would have to take a look and re-remember. So there's, you know, nothing wrong with being nostalgic and going into a map and just sort of remembering how to how to do that oh there's there's so many ideas and things that come to me when we start making these videos and uh we'll, we have other topics coming for you yesterday we did uh, three videos and you know i see a lot of comments saying you guys are always busy yes we are <clears throat> but there's just so much to get across in what feels like it may be a limited time frame before the chaos gets to the point where you know, maybe people don't have the time uh, of freedom that we have at this point in time because they're having to do other things and also limited time, perhaps even on the Internet. So that is a possibility. Now, this is from Iran Spectator it says Iran plans to attack Israel on August 12th. So that's still nine days away during Tisha B'Av uh, Israeli holiday, perhaps, you know, again, the last time they did take their time in giving their response, which did not seem to be too effective. Of course, we can never really say in this day and age 
Uh, if you have not seen the movie 1984, I would spend uh, the couple hours to go take a look at it because uh, it's just it's exactly what we, we are facing. You know, the, the news is completely manufactured and fabricated. And, you know, they use even past events constantly with fresh captions saying this just happened when it might have been from four years ago, seven years ago. So we do know they're on this roll towards the WW3. That is very, very obvious. This is also reporting that Iraqi soldiers have started marching towards Syria. Well, I do think, and, and as I've been saying for a long time, I, I expected, and uh, the guide said that my clock was short, or meaning my time frame was too tight, that we would have a big uh, Islamic unity that would manifest back in like April, May, or May, April, May, June. Uh, and that did not happen because I did expect them to attack uh, Israel harder. But, you know, timelines <clears throat> timelines can change. I think they're always changing. I think they're always kind of uh, coming into uh, a, a solidity and then other events could cause the mass consciousness of humans to shift it into a totally different uh, reality. And then there's also the chance uh, that a lot of things just simply get paused or slowed down. So, you know, this is talking about, you know, the possibility of Iraq and Iran who did battle each other. I, you know, this was going on when I was younger and I remember the Iraq and Iran war. And it, it was a, a bloody, brutal war with lots of deaths. And in reality, we look back to the history books and we think, you know, of Babylon and Persia. These were great nations and, you know, dominant powers uh, on the planet at, at a different period in time. So Ar Iranian media has re started rebroadcasting the Iran-Iraq war anthem in reference to the state of alert Iran is witnessing. There's also videos saying that they have so many uh, missiles ready. Their only problem is storage uh, and safe storage out of the uh, possibility of being hit by drones. Again, we're going into like all new warfare um, from our perspective. But the reality is I, I don't think any of these things are new at all. Not at all new. In fact, I, I think even if we go back and look at things in a biblical time frame, they were talking about the same stuff that is being used now, but just, you know, it was an act of God. You know, God sent one of his angels, but it's, it's, it's really always been uh, extraterrestrials, interdimensionals, and technology. Well, if you look at the translation in the Bible and, and you understand that everything they're talking about is what you're seeing on the TV screen, it's some type of war, some type of army marching here, marching there. You know, the, the angels are, are merely just people who are announcing what is going on, delivering the message. Um, it helps you put, put everything into perspective on what our history has always been been like you know i i think a lot of people want to see this magical world and the world was different but it wasn't uh what is portrayed in the bible it's more like what you see on the screen the pentagon uh is boosting u.s presence in the middle east and boy are they boosting it uh, th th when i was looking at uh, <laughs> what's really going on it's it is it i've never seen so much firepower being sent over uh, ever and I've been tracking this for like eight or nine years and tracking it for videos for over seven so the USS Abraham Lincoln carrier strike group is going to the Middle East um, as well and we were showing this map and you see here they have that the Dwight David Eisenhower carrier strike group and the Harry S. Truman here off the coast of you know Virginia North Carolina and they're heading out so this is an addition to these that are already heading out and then you know you look at what's already over in the area again this Pat for SWAT that's National Guard that's been over there National Guard should be guarding our coasts 
it's it's been over in the Middle East ever since 9/11, just after 9/11. In fact, just after 9/11, they shifted a lot of our national guard who should be protecting us from attack abroad and it stayed that way but that's part of the bigger purpose and and that's part of how they planned things out decades ago so you know 20 plus years ago they were starting to send more and more of our troops and soldiers that were intended to protect the homeland away from the homeland and so you know again I, I do see where where things are coming out in that timeline, sort of like what we were expecting to happen more um, in spring, heading towards the beginning of summer. But it just feels now like it's a little bit more of a, a fall event that we're watching, you know, more of a latter part of summer into fall. Uh, so... When you look at the amount of ships that are going to end up, the firepower that's going to end up probably in the, in the Mediterranean, in the Red Sea, in the Persian Gulf, it's massive. I've, I've never seen this much deployed. And then right here, you, you also have all this over in the Pacific. <clears throat> so there's a ton of firepower over in the Pacific as well. And so, you know, that leaves me to think, too, well, who's, who's guarding home? <laughs> yeah, I know. Who's on first? What are they going to do here? Uh, you know, who's? it's just typical of what they do. Yeah, and a lot of people are aware of all the buzz and talk of U.N. troops coming. Uh, well, U.N. troops have been used to go to many different nations don't uh forget that they've been used uh to quell issues so to speak in various places around the globe in africa in the caribbean and in other places as well uh and many have brought up the possibility that that they may be used again in the u.s with so much of our stuff abroad this is nothing new. This is nothing new. Um, again, if you haven't seen John Levy, uh, I, I would definitely recommend his channel. It's a lot of fun. Uh, he's good to listen to before falling asleep because he has a, a really peaceful, calm demeanor, yet brings up a lot of good uh, information regarding the resets that have never stopped. They've never stopped, you know. So uh, when you talk about a great one, we're just talking about uh, perhaps one that happens to a little bit higher degree, but yet it's still happening all the time. And instead of thinking in twelve thousand year intervals, you might have to think more in line with, you know, maybe every two hundred years or so. There's this bigger, but there is a continual one going on. So election day is less than 100 days away. And, you know, there's all sorts of buzz uh, amongst the agencies that there's going to be some sort of attacks, you know, during this, this time period. I think, you know, that, that just goes without saying. You know, there's going to be a lot of chaos. But it does feel, too, that those sleepy cellular units... Um, are perhaps getting uh, anxious uh, or perhaps getting itchy trigger fingers uh, because the chaos is definitely ramping up. So be safe out there. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be in any um, big cities. No, and this is what we've been saying you know, the whole time. Now, uh, I do know that all the regulars, they understand the bigger picture. Um, it's not safe to be in the bigger cities. And so... British people are taking to the streets in Sunderland and even some of the ones that are not really huge, huge cities by, by any stretch of the imagination. This person says, I have never seen anything like this in this country. Mass protests spreading between cities is something we often see in Iran and other oppressive regimes. But the UK is hitting that point now. This mass mi migration, uh, for those that haven't seen the movie, uh, the um, Gangs of New York, I think it was. Was it Gangs of New York with Daniel Day-Lewis and, yeah, and, and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio? It's an old movie, maybe 25 years ago or so. 
check it out if you haven't seen it because it is really how the system operates and and it is a good example of um, the type of people that end up getting shuffled into higher positions uh, you know again this is nothing new it seems new but it's just basically the intensity because now instead of like using these tactics in isolated areas they're using it on a huge portion of the globe and this is again uh, right before we're heading into another uh, global conflagration so the uk braces for more violent protests calls for the prime minister to resign already wait a minute so you remember liz liz trussy <laughs> she didn't last long and then rishi really didn't last too long when you look at it Keir Starmer is another one of them. You know, he there's no change here. It's just it's just another mask, that's all. Just another mask that we're looking at. No real change. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So how long will he last? His <laughs> calls for his resignation are growing as you got 20 protests, over 20 protests, um, just starting to really light the UK on fire. Again, uh, we have so many friends and family over in the UK. Uh, it is our second biggest audience. Um, much love to everybody over there. We're all going through these times. You have fire extinguishers being used to cover riot shields. So, you know, again, people would slip right off. Uh, you know, ingenuity, huh? <laughs> this is Sunderland again. And, you know, when you look at the aftermath of this, the it's just it's a war zone it's a war zone it's just crazy you know what this world has is coming to but again this is one of those great redos and it is well underway and this is a massive part of the plan it's again order out of chaos it's right in front of our faces right in front of our faces order out of chaos now these people are protesting that they want the illegals to have the right to vote you know so here you go this goes kind of against everything that um, most people have been brought up with inside the country yet you know the bigger picture is the system itself is the epitome of corruption there's seven to nine million uh, that came in recently that uh, Harris, Biden, Biden, Harris, whatever, you know, however you want to word it, is, is looking to um, just basically sweep under the table, uh, you know, give them all full rights. I, I've seen depictions of credit card receipts showing uh, somebody paying for a latte over in Starbucks, and they had a balance that was given to them from the federal government of like thirteen thousand dollars in their account. How often do they get that? Um, I mean, shoot, <laughs> you know this. This is exactly the bribery that governments do. Bribes. They governments bribe. They've they've pulled people in off of boats going into New York City Harbor, and this is why I'm referencing that movie because it sticks in my head. You know, the Irish and the Italians didn't always get along in New York City so well. Um, and, you know, there was brutal fights going on. And they were utilizing um, the suffering of one group that was suffering over in the old country. Uh, and again, the, the, the Americas may be the old country. Actually, the old country is underneath everybody's feet, no matter where you are. No matter where you are. Because, again, it's layer upon layer of civilization that has succumbed to a redo and then they redo it again and again and again and it's it, it, it it's gone on for thousands of years the difference is that the bigger energy that's being utilized right now is coming from the real creator of this universe because there is a creator of this universe um, and that being is very benevolent and loving and there is, again, a mother under our feet, so to speak. And, you know, you'll get the brainwashed people saying, oh, that's some new age, you know, uh, Luciferian doctrine. Well, you know, all the indigenous people of, of the world look at it in that light as, as it's just simply that there is 
um, a masculine and a feminine energy interplay that gives us everything that we see and experience on this particular density and that actually rides up into the higher densities as well there's nothing uh scary about that but then again the whole luciferian thing is is again another mistranslation misunderstanding uh and are we afraid of light well we should be afraid of the darkness uh, that this satanic system, because it truly is an adversarial system to everything on the planet, is always spreading. But the darkness, they pose it to be light. Everything is in verse in this world. And, and still, there's so much that humanity cannot seem to, to shed of its indoctrination. Uh, so then you have people protesting for the illegals to have and then against having the right to vote. Well, as long as you vote, you're in the system. I think the best vote is is to eliminate the system. The system needs to be taken out to the dumpster. And, you know, again, you got to say who's really in charge. Here you have the Pentagon revoking the plea deal of, they say, 9-11 mastermind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and two of his fellow co-conspirators. Now, the reality is they, they probably have all been enjoying themselves somewhere in Aruba or Barbados and you know many times we see that these are if they're not directly on the payroll of cia fbi or, or maybe mi6 or maybe Mossad, then at, they're certainly uh being taken care of or you know they they could be just again actors we could take these masks off and there's somebody that looks maybe it's a woman under there yeah, this is the, the craziness. But the thing we should say is, why are they telling us the Pentagon revoked the plea deal? So, you, okay, so they're telling us the Pentagon is telling Harris Biden, the executive branch, no. Oh, okay. Make note of that because that is significant. So what does that mean? In my mind, they're, they're telling us that we're going to have the military at some point going against the executive branch which is something a lot of people have talked about at different times. Yeah, it's something to definitely pay attention to. But for me, it's just watching the chaos um, spin out of control in, in so many ways. It's like, how do you stop it? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know of too many ways you can stop it. You just have to energetically pull back into yourself. I mean, it's a mess out there. Yeah, but it's, it's again, the disintegration of the system. <clears throat> BlackRock, which owns a ton of Ukraine, after you know all the things that have gone on, what has it led to? Well, you know, Ukraine is definitely a breadbasket of Europe. Absolutely, might be the breadbasket of Europe. And who owns it now? Well, BlackRock. <laughs> and we've talked about the origins of that BlackRock. It's it's really uh, the draconian and side of the Anunnaki uh, control system. And it's referencing that, which, again, we can see in, in the religions, uh, again, that have been given to us by the system. So now BlackRock owns a huge portion. 47% of Ukraine's land is owned by BlackRock. Now they've asked that the soldiers not be buried on the land that they lost their lives to. Talk about a psyop. It goes on and on and on. Yeah, you know, again, they sell the whole concept of patriotism. In the case of Ukraine, Ukraine was not a sovereign nation in 1970. It wasn't, you know, a sovereign nation in the 60s when I was born. It was part of the Soviet Union. These borders are always changing. Nations come, nations go. They want you to die for your nation, even though your, your nation may not be here or in, in the relatively near future or it may not have existed for generations. What really is the point? Again, when you look to Vietnam, the communists won. But look to Vietnam today. Uh, you know, now the quality of life there is certainly better than it was uh, at the time of you know, the Vietnam War in the 60s to early 70s. In, in reality, uh, it doesn't look like life there is much different than in other uh, Southeast Asian countries that are, are not communist. You know, <laughs> better dead than red? 
Really? I mean, because it's all really the same system. They just sell you on these slogans. It's, it's, it's a mess, big mess. It is, but it's the awakening and saying it's it's not my it's not worth my son's life to go and 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 die, and now he can't even be buried on the land that he fought to protect because this investment group owns it and and they don't want you know his body there even though he bled for it. It's just insanity. Can we see how stupid it truly is? Meanwhile, Colorado's three large front-range wildfires were likely caused by people. That makes a whole bunch. Uh, again, it, it, it's interesting how they automatically get the little birds tweeting, uh, climate change, global warming, see what's happening. What about the guy with the matches over in the corner? Climate change, global warming, see what's happening. I know, and this was really, really creepy, this huge building with absolutely no windows. <laughs> I kind of think it's sitting there for uh, this horrible thing to happen in New York, and, you know, somehow that's going to be the air that they get to breathe through those big tunnel-like things there. Usually government buildings are not marked, and there are no, no windows, or if the, there are windows, they're blacked out. So this was just really creepy. Yeah, some say it's some sort of internet hub. There's a lot of cover stories that, unfortunately, many people believe right right away. I think it's better if we're a little cynical and not trust the cover stories. And, you know, here you have the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which led to a fire and, and did take out a lot of structures that were very old and beautiful. Was it all just trying to wipe out the remnants of Tartaria or whatever we want to call the civilization that existed um, before this one. Again, there's a reason why they don't want you out in the West. The West is loaded with uh, debris, relics, and residue that tell too much of a story. This is why, again, uh, they make certain areas impossible to afford. Now, this is just bizarre. And this was captured on a trail cam in North Carolina. Okay, what the heck is that? Um, actually, now I think I, I'm starting to remember seeing something in a children's book or something like, kind of like this. It didn't appear to have a head. Now, you could see if, if the head's there, it, it's, it's pointing down quite a bit. Uh, the, the arms are all the way down to like the ankles. Is this a Bigfoot? Is this a dogman? You know, I feel like this is exactly one of those beings, one of those things. It, what, what it feels like is it may be interdimensional. Um, I'll tell you, uh, my own experiences in the North Carolina mountains, weird stuff, lots of weird stuff, lots of cryptids, lots of um, elemental uh, energy, Lots of giant energy left over. Um, nothing would surprise me in, in Appalachia. Absolutely not. Now, this is a very clear trail cam uh, photo. So what do we know? It's got legs, arms, and a butt, sort of. Uh, it doesn't appear to have a head. Or, you know, is, is the head just at such an angle? Or did the head morph out? And into another dimension first. You know, because I've been blessed to actually watch a tall gray phase out of um, 3D reality. And um, that gray did sabotage me physically. Um, and that's what it, its whole purpose was. It was about 8 to 9 feet tall. And when I woke up, because it didn't expect me to be able to wake up and see what it was doing, it looked away from me and went into a meditative state. And then its body just kind of turned into an energy pattern and then was gone. Um, it, it almost feels like it, this may be doing something like that. I've, I've found footprints leading to trees and cliffs and that then they just stop it's like well, where did it go i don't see any footprints leading away i know i think a lot of people continually 
look for the logic instead of understanding that we do live in a magical world. We live in a world where just really odd things can happen, really odd things have happened. I mean, to me, it feels like a biological entity, and I'm with Mike, too. It does feel like it, it's phasing. There's something there. Very, very interesting. You know, and then we also look at the legs. Those legs are kind of different. They're weird. I, it's not a bear's legs. It, it doesn't look like bear's legs and now or bear's bottom. <laughs> no, it doesn't look like a bear bottom either. And this is um, Rocky Mountain um, Sasquatch. Yeah, Rocky Mountain Sasquatch. Um, and uh, like he says, he says these are not bear legs. <clears throat> he talks about the angle and everything. He said, no, definitively, that's not a bear. Um, but it's curious. Look forward to your guys' opinions on that. And what is this little guy with the big eyes? Um, one would think some sort of bat, but I don't know if those eyes, uh, I don't know. Maybe he is some sort of bat. Or is he a winged squirrel? One of those flying squirrels. Well, they call him Kalugos. He's he's cute, but he does look like he could be a little bit nippy. Ah, he's a cutie. He just wants to stay safe there. Yeah, that's what we all want to do is to stay safe and just share the love. And uh, this guy, look at him. Is he a black mink or something? Uh... He looks like he's a little tired. He's had a big, big day. Look at those paws. Nature is amazing. Absolutely. Um, like this channel because they have some very unusual animals that you don't see all the time. We all need a hug sometimes. Please do share hugs uh, with people today. Get out there. And uh, I, I used to make it the point when I ran uh, retirement communities to make sure I gave at least 50 to 75 hugs a day. And it does really change the energy and the atmosphere. It really does. Thank you guys for your support. Look forward to your comments. Make sure to be like, shared, and subscribing. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.